My grandparents were really into their caravan holidays. And as a boy, when I was growing up with them, my mum and I used to go with them on many of their caravan holidays. Now we used to go to quite a few of the same places. We had like regular locations that we like going to. But we only ever came to this particular place the once. Now, on my last tour, when I was in York, I was saying that when I was nine years old, I came through York with my family on our way to a particular place where we spent a caravan holiday. And this was the destination. This is Scarborough. Scarborough lies on the North Sea coast of North Yorkshire. Historically part of the North Riding of Yorkshire, the town lies between 10 to 230 feet above sea level, rising steeply northward and westward from the harbour onto limestone cliffs. The older part of the town lies around the harbour and is protected by a rocky headland. With a population of just over 61,000, Scarborough is the largest holiday resort on the Yorkshire coast. The town has fishing and service industries, including a growing digital and creative economy, as well as being a tourist destination. Inhabitants of the town are known as Scarborians. The Spa is a Grade 2 listed building located in Scarborough's South Bay. The spa has a grand hall that seats nearly 2,000 and hosts live entertainment including the Scarborough Spa Orchestra and the annual Scarborough Jazz Festival. The Spa Theatre, a 600-seat Victorian theatre, is home to summer season shows and Christmas pantomimes. The Spa Ocean Room is used for dances, conferences and other events including Scarborough Jazz Festival, Coastable and Sci-Fi Scarborough. Now this is really rather exciting for me because I can remember this spa and I think I've still got a photo from when my family and I were here 40 years ago. A Victorian cliff tramway links the spa complex with the South Cliff District, 200 feet above South Bay. The spa was accessible by a walk along the South Bay seafront for visitors to the castle, harbour and other attractions near to the town centre. But there was a steep descent to the seafront from St Nicholas Cliff. In 1826, the Cliff Bridge Company leased the spa from the corporation and to maximise the number of paying customers, built an iron footbridge to span the valley from St Nicholas Cliff to the spa. It was 75 feet above the valley, 400 feet long and 13 and a half feet wide. The bridge opened on the 19th of July 1827 and became a fashionable promenade and provided views and a link from the town centre. It proved so popular that a toll booth was put up at the St Nicholas Cliff End. South Bay was the site of the original medieval settlement and the harbour, which formed the current Old Town District. This remains the main tourist area, with a sandy beach, cafes, amusement arcades, theatres and entertainment facilities. The modern commercial town centre has migrated 400 metres northwest of the harbour area and 100 feet above it 
and contains the transport hubs, main services, shopping and nightlife. came caravanning on this holiday 40 years ago there was me there was mum mum's sister auntie Jo my grandparents and granny's sister and her husband because I think my great uncle uncle Bob I believe he originally came from Scarborough or somewhere nearby because I seem to remember coming on this holiday to revisit his old haunt but we only ever came here the once but it was really nice and I think Scarborough was one of the family's favourites and it was certainly my favourite seaside resort that I'd ever come to at the time. My family always loved seaside resorts because we always used to spend more time in all the amusement arcades and Scarborough was no exception, it was great. We used to play prize bingo, I always remember Granny particularly used to love the one-armed bandits um, and I loved playing bingo and all the sort of grab a cuddly toy machines. Not really my cup of tea now, but then again if I had a family and kids I probably would enjoy doing that sort of thing now. The harbour has undergone major regeneration, including the new Albert Strange pontoons, a more pedestrian-friendly promenade, street lighting and seating. Walking on from South Bay, I followed the road around the headland towards North Bay. This high rocky peninsula is perhaps the most striking feature of the town's geography. The peninsula supports the 11th century ruins of Scarborough Castle and separates the seafront into South Bay and North Bay.
has traditionally been the more peaceful end of the resort, although there is still plenty to do and see here. The North Bay Railway is a miniature railway running through Northstead Manor Gardens to the Sea Life Centre at Scolby Mills. The railway has what is believed to be the oldest operational diesel hydraulic locomotive in the world. As I walked slightly inland from North Bay, I came to Peasholme Park, which was restored in June 2007 to its Japanese-themed glory. For many years, a mock maritime battle, based on the Battle of the River Plate, has been regularly reenacted on the boating lake, with large model boats and fireworks throughout the summer holiday season. I'm going to head up to the castle now. I'm not really sure why we never came back to Scarborough after our first holiday. I'm guessing it was because it was perhaps that much further away from home. Where I live now, it's less than a three hour drive away for me. However, where I was growing up with my family as a boy, it probably would have been at least twice that distance. So I'm guessing that was the reason why we never returned to Scarborough. With over 2,500 years of turbulent history behind it, Scarborough Castle defends the prominent headland of Castle Hill between the two bays, with sheer drops to the sea. Before the castle was built, this natural fortress was favoured by prehistoric settlers before serving as a Roman signal station and Viking haven. This spectacular castle has also suffered sieges from medieval kings and civil war armies, and German naval bombardment during World War II. Now you can climb to the battlement viewing platforms for dramatic coastline views and take tea in the 18th century Master Gunner's house. Just below the castle stands St Mary's Church, built in the 12th century, which was largely destroyed during the siege of the castle in the Civil War. The church was rebuilt in the late 17th century and restored in the mid-19th century. It has a large graveyard, including the grave of Anne Bronte, who died in Scarborough in 1849. Well, I'm just going to make my way towards the town centre because whilst I'm here in Scarborough there's something very important that I have to do. Reaching the town centre 
I walked past the railway station and Stephen Joseph Theatre, following Fallsgrave Road. I'm trying to find the caravan site that we would have stayed in 40 years ago. Now, if I remember rightly, it was just on the outskirts of Scarborough, just off the main road, on a bend near some woods. So I think it's up this way. This is it, right on the bend in the road as I remember, and the woods. After having found the caravan site, or at least the site of where I had stayed as a nine-year-old, I made my way back to South Bay, where I crossed the Spa Bridge. begin to tell you what a pleasure it's been going back to Scarborough after all these years. 40 years since my original visit. I see it very differently now as I would have done as a nine-year-old but it's still a very nice place and certainly today is very very well spent. It's been a very nostalgic trip and it's almost exactly like I remember it. It's weird. And what was an added bonus was finding the caravan site that we stayed in when I was nine. How wonderful is that?